one one is fine, right? Because they're only ever going to talk once. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, we're gonna we're gonna do the breakout um, recaps again. It's gonna be exact same format as yesterday. So the online group will go first. Everyone will have four minutes. I'll struggle with the timer again, and we'll go from group five, four, three, two, one after the um, online session goes. So Etan and Julian, and then Erica and Sam and so on. Hopefully you guys all remember. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that's our order of how we're gonna report. Um, I'm sharing the screen. All right, Max, uh, you can start now. Okay, can can everyone hear? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to present the results of what we talked about on our online breakout session. And um, just like to say a quick thanks to everyone who help set up an online side to this. It's very nice to be able to participate from across the world. Um, so the, the first question, what challenges are facing the tectonic models? Um, something we raised was um, what benchmarks could we come up with um, for our large scale tectonic models and on what scale both temporal and spatial, um, could these benchmarks be applied? Um, and tying in with this, there's are, are there good representations in the real world for these processes? How can we test our models against something that actually exists? And um, how do we deal with when um, we have non-unique solutions? And um, how, how do we compare between um, between um, data and um, models between observations and models um, when they sometimes come from very different things. Um, do we need models that can um, deal with different timescales, both short and very long timescales? Um, and how would these work? And how much can we just par parameterizing different scales? Um, and something important we raised was that these type of models um, require links between um, the observation, the, the field observations and data collection side and um, the modeling community. And um, it's, very it's very common to find um, field geologists who just don't trust models at all, or the other way around, um, modelers who don't necessarily see the value in um, detailed field evidence. And um, we raised this as something that we need more discussion between these two groups as well for, for the models to work. Um, a few specific points. So weakening on faults is critical, but the exact physics are not clearly known right now. So that's something to work on. And um, something that could help deal with some of the problems is looking at tectonics of places that aren't Earth. Um, looking at other planets as well. Um, in particular, Venus maybe that may have more active tectonic processes and could give a, a good environment to compare our tectonic models from Earth to um, another planet with very different conditions and maybe less blurring factors, less erosion and all that as well. Um, moving on to the second question, um, it was maybe something that was less our, our field of expertise, but raised a few issues. <clears throat> We weren't sure if there was um, more of an emphasis on detail um, rather than the bigger picture, um, but that was something that needed thinking about. And also how accurate term surface processes might be when extrapolated over long million, tens of million year geological timescales as well. And um, <clears throat> um, where are the 
offshore studies in this, um, what's going on in depositional environments um, below the ocean, and um, um, what coupling do we require with um, climate and ocean circulation models as well for these surface models to, to work properly. Um, Can you try to wrap in about a minute? Sure, just coming to the end. Um, and to, to come to the last question, um, we, um, what, what do we need to tie this all together between the two? Um, a better understanding of the, the other community's science, um, help constrain what properties are important and feedback into coupled models. I guess that's what we're doing right now. And um, an important point, how do 3D processes influence the interpretation of 2D models? Um, how important are 3D models compared to 2D models? And um, how we come to terms with the uncertainties in models? And um, a few specific points. Um, to what extent the, the surface and deep earth systems are coupled, which was something that was coming up in a few talks. And um, finally, down to computation, um, what techniques can we use to make computation cheaper? So that's more or less what we talked about. Wonderful, thank you so much. We appreciate that Google Doc too, for participating. Okay, uh, Etan and Julian. All right, so I'll start with the points that came up in our group. Okay, so I'll start with the points that came up in our group about the challenges that long-term tectonic models face. And so one point that came up was that not many, or like 3D models is just something that people start to do, and they are sometimes not well constrained, and it's difficult to validate them. And um, also in particular, there are not enough well constrained data sets to do that and some things like earthquakes are not well understood. And so we have to improve that. Then there's this issue of strain localization. So as soon as there's brittle deformation in the model, there's a resolution dependence and there we are just starting on how to resolve that. Um, then there are large uncertainties in the input parameters for these long-term platonic models, in particular the rheology, where it's not clear how exactly should we choose that. Um, and we, at the moment, we don't deal at all with the interaction of fluids and brittle deformation like melts and water. And in, in terms of the surface processes, um, some of the things that were already said were also said in our group. Um, and one of the challenges that came up is how well defined and physically based the equations are. And Related to that is, should we aspire for a globally applicable single model or, or multiple models that will fit the setting that they uh, attempt to model? Um, how can we uh, better constrain initial uh, conditions in specific settings where they really influence uh, the outcome of the model in terms of our ability to uh, evaluate uh, our model performance? In the same issue that came up um, with the geodynamics component is the uh, resolution dependence of results. And what are the metrics um, that we need in order to, to look at um, this, the influence of these different uh, resolutions? There, was, there were also a few points um, that were jo a joint challenge to, the, to these communities, regardless of coupling. And one was is how to compute uncertainty in, in the models in a consistent way. The second one was, what is the degree of complexity in, that is required to produce predictions? And this is very much dependent on the question that guides um, um, the model. And how do we um, make results reproducible and re replicable um, in, in this context? Yeah, and then we also talked about what the challenges are for coupling. And so one point that came up was 
which components do we want to exchange between the models and can we um, like we need to produce some kind of platform where code can be shared and where we can define some kind of interface what do we want to exchange then we talked about that a lot there are different time and length scales in both of these models and how do we define the interaction between these different time and length scales and like how to do that best then there are these different parameters in the surface evolution models and it would be good if we could find a way to link that to rock types or to the inputs in the tectonic models so that these parameters are consistent between the two models and then um, one point that also came up was that there's some communication issue or that we just do not know enough about the other community. So people should maybe, like someone suggested, we should come up with a list of things that we know about our community or think we know, things that we think we don't know in our community and things that we don't know about the other community or that we would like to know about the other community. And one suggestion was, can we maybe in some models, some processes use a stochastic representation of them instead of a like representation representation based on physical processes like for example false they are just like a statistical feature where they show up and um yeah then that came up in the presentation today um how do we parallelize surface models can we do that more and yeah how do we develop the right software and the right modeling tools to implement all of these things okay sam and erica And then on deck is Adina and Timo. Okay, so I think we already hit, a lot of the other groups already hit on some of these themes. But with regards to tectonic processes, um, with regards to tectonic processes, um, a big theme that came out was uncertainty um, with regards to lithospheric rheology, how accurately is accurate, how accurate is accurate enough. Um, we also talked about complexity. How complex do the models need to be for the tectonic processes? What's the question you're trying to answer? Um, do you know what level of complexity is necessary um, and which parameters to test and for which purposes? Um, we had talked a lot about simplification, simplifying the models to understand what level of complexity is needed and for what reason compare complex models to simplified ones and then we talked about initial conditions what are the initial conditions and how do they influence the final results okay so for surface processes um, starting off with uh, uncertainty in physics um, we need a better understanding of the physics within surface processes particularly uh, the coefficient k because everything is lumped into that uh, tunable parameter um, and also I'd, I'd like to um, reflect what the remote group said about 3d processes and 2d processes what do we lose by integrating into uh, fewer and fewer dimensions uh, complexity what level of complexity is important and where should we put our resources our time and effort uh, how can we incorporate important uh, complexity to the models how can we determine which types of complexity which parameters require our greatest amounts of attention um, and how to bring other needed uh, processes that can be that can be represented in simplified models uh, into our own surface processes models such as groundwater uh, climate and uh, vegetation dynamics uh, in cases where we can trade off some complexity for faster models uh, taking an ensemble approach to parameter calibration or uh, uh, tuning for model fitness is also uh, useful and we also spoke about a the issue of equifinality. Uh, so we're calibrating our models based on what is easily observable. A lot of times that is uh, topographic shape. Um, but the parameter values that are generated by that calibration may not accurately reflect the, the actual physical conditions in the landscapes. So you might be getting the fit for the wrong reasons uh, and we need more checks in our model for that. Uh, in terms of metrics, uh, in addition to topography is uh, defining the fitness of the model. Uh, we can also uh, begin to use stratigraphic records to help us understand the temporal variation in surface processes, and environmental conditions that influence them. Um, uh, so that, um, I think we get into, yeah, so uh, question three, uh, 
in terms of scale, uh, there's disparate temporal and spatial uh, scales. Are we too biased by the processes that we see right now? And can we assume that they are the same over millions of years? Uh, so the major scale difference, how best can we use our sub-modeling or nested modeling methods uh, to link processes that are more relevant at finer scales, but we'd still like to see their, uh, their contribution to, to larger scale process, tectonic processes. Uh, accessibility, what are the best practices for sharing of data, tools, uh, such as models and knowledge? Uh, always uh, model responsibly, uh, make model results and uncertainty comprehensible to larger audiences. Um, but you also, of course, want to avoid the black box uh, method of sharing, uh, sharing your model. Uh, and also that it's important to come up with compelling ways to share uh, your methodology and your results uh, to assist with uh, collaborations between surface processes modelers and tectonic modelers. All right, one last point, uh, definition of goal. Uh, should we always integrate into one model or should we just interface between the tectonics and surface processes models? Uh, do we need high fidelity output or don't we? And uh, can we accomplish that goal using simpler models? Thanks. Thank you guys, oh great. Um, and Benoit and Renee are on deck. Okay, this is, these are the results from group three. Uh, question one, long-term tectonic challenges um, regarding numerical uh, methods and physics is the question about um, how can we deal with the really large computational cost and the robustness of solvers, et cetera. Um, there uh, was the discussion that there's need for better uh, transient formulations instead of uh, instantaneous models. Um, there's the question of how to deal with the fact that they are discrete and continuum models and how, how do they compare, how do they integrate with each other. Um, and lastly, uh, even the question of governing equations and how to incorporate uh, rheology is not, not really clear and, and needs to be tackled. Um, then regarding uh, verification, um, we feel there's a lack, lack of understanding of the differences between the different codes, models, and numerical methods used by the different groups. Um, there's uh, different timescales between the observations that are accessible to us and the response and the computations that we do. So that's, a, that's an issue to verify uh, these uh, computations. And then uh, finally regarding verification is uh, what, what are even the observations that, that we want that we could get in the future? Um, how do we deal with that? Um, and lastly, um, regarding the community, um, I think this was brought up already earlier today. Um, uh, there's a lack of training, uh, support, documentation, access to, to tools, to models, to software, et cetera. And it would be good to have some way to enable that. I'll talk about surface process challenges. So I think our group agreed that the biggest challenge is related to validation of models with observational data. So, and that is because we have non-unique interpretation of data due to uncertainty and noise, and we'll never get a perfect fit. So how will models deal with this? Do we need to improve the physics of the different types of processes or the long, short-term, large, small-scale response? And also, what is the model response to different parameter inputs? For example, the input of high-dimensional parameter um, data. So uh, some suggestions, some people propose that we need to use smarter techniques like the adjoint gradient and homogenization techniques. And other challenges um, relate to mesh dependency and also how flexible are models to address the questions we want to address. Okay, and question three is about coupling. Um, on the physics and data side, um, what, what we uh, discussed early on is that uh, all of the problems regarding the coupling uh, depend on the question that we're trying to address by the coupling. Why do we want to do the coupling? And that, everything else leads from there, especially what time length scale do we want to look at? Um, and of course, there is different time and length scales between them, so we need to scale one of the processes up or down, and depending on what question we are trying to answer. Um, there's a big issue with respect to validation and tuning of the models, and we assume this is a lot more challenging because you now have two models with twice as many parameters, and uh, yeah, we will have a difficult time doing that. Um, another question we asked is, um, 
do we need different data to verify that coupling of these processes uh, is correct or makes sense? And if yes, how do we get that? Um, from the numerical point of view, um, there's of course, when you couple two different codes or methods, there's the question of robustness, stability, accuracy, etc. There's a big issue if you want to couple existing codes is that there are different numerical schemes that are used, final elements, final differences, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to worry about interpolation, different resolutions, and all these kinds of problems. Um, and this was also already brought up by earlier groups is uh, we need to communicate data. So the question is, what do we communicate? And well, data might be uh, represented in different ways, for example, topography. And lastly, the uh, issues uh, about the community is we need better communication between the disciplines. Um, we need to find questions that actually motivate both communities so that there are people who are going to come together and work on these issues. Um, and then when you're presenting your results, the question is how do you communicate and describe the methods, the results, the limitations of your experiments, et cetera, that the other communities understand what's going on. And uh, there's certainly also a need to incorporate computational scientists in this, in this, in this problem. That's all we have. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, we'll be on Zoe and Nathan after these guys. After these guys, yeah. Okay, so like the other groups, we discussed the challenges for long term tectonic models. and. Um, we had some numerical uh, challenges like efficient inverse modeling schemes um, and stable multigrid solvers for large viscosity variations. Um, but also like the other groups, we had a lot of challenges that came from accessibility of codes of models. Um, like how do you even get to a geodynamic modeling code if you're, for example, not a geodynamic modeler by profession? Um, how, do, how do you learn how to use it? What is the role of community organizations like CIG and CSTMS in this project? Like how can they help um, making codes, the codes accessible? Um, could regular webinars or video tutorials help in that? Um, um, how do you design codes so that they are accessible with interfaces and documentation? And also how do you make the computational resources available that you need to run these models? How do you make it easy for uh, also smaller universities or smaller working groups to access these resources. Okay, so um, second question about the challenges uh, of these landscape dimension models. Uh, so actually a lot of, uh, in our session, a lot of challenges uh, came from the community, dynamic community. And the big challenge is actually uh, where to start, uh, which model uh, to pick up because there's no single model that uh, everyone agrees on. Uh, well, we still uh, use a lot of uh, stream power and diffusion models, but there is still ongoing debate on whether or not uh, these models are uh, accurate and in which cases. So the problem is that there's many different models and codes for uh, different natural environments. And this is something that is uh, confusing for uh, tectonic people uh, to choose the model. Uh, another challenge is uh, scaling up the processes uh, to origin and continents, obviously. And there was also some uh, ongoing debate on the mesh sensitivity. So uh, the model parameters that are sensitive to the scale. Uh, so some said that uh, it is an issue, others said that it's not an issue. So it needs uh, definitely some clarification. And so the uh, last question about uh, coupling uh, different models. So there were uh, two main uh, categories of challenges that uh, arise. Uh, the first is the social challenges. Uh, we kind of all agree uh, that we both, both communities uh, need some communication effort uh, to make. So to ensure that uh, the models can be understood uh, by other people outside of uh, the community. Um, it's also important to uh, work together. So not only reuse uh, the work that has been done in another community for uh, uh, our uh, studies, but actually if we want to couple models, then we need to work uh, by 
group of a couple of researchers from both uh, community. Uh, so there is actually some work that uh, has been done on complex models, uh, but there are still some technical challenges. Uh, and one of the main challenges uh, for uh, geodynamic uh, is uh, to have parallelized uh, landscape evolution models that can run also on this open system. Uh, so how to pass the information between uh, different kinds of uh, models. They have different kinds of numerical uh, schemes and so on. So it's, uh, it's a big issue too. Uh, choosing the, the time steps uh, so, um, so this can be an issue in some cases, maybe other cases, this is not really an issue. And uh, last, uh, some uh, that have tried to, a uh, couple models uh, came with issues of how uh, having a model set up like uh, initial and boundary conditions that are consistent with uh, both models. Thank you, and last but not least, Nathan and Anso. Uh, first, um, challenges facing long-term tectonic models. So we need um, coordination between tectonic and surface process models, modelers um, in terms of um, uh, what model uh, output and input um, uh, are needed uh, for coupled models. And then identifying metrics for uh, validating models. And we need a higher resolution and therefore uh, good parallel scaling. And we need more detailed uh, strain localization. Um, and we need to incorporate uh, fluids uh, in long-term tectonic models and have to tackle um, the associated challenges with um, uh, coupling between fluid and solid. Um, need more physics-based knowledge uh, on hydrothermal processes and uh, need to decide on how much details are needed to um, be incorporated in models and how much averaging or upscaling is appropriate and need to improve um, um, stress fields and how they can be compared with the uh, uh, available stress observations and visualizing model. <clears throat> um, and then what is the important on time and uh, space scales and uh, what are the then um, good science questions we need to answer. Um, then we um, well, lack of constraints over uh, long time scales, uh, they are very difficult to uh, validate uh, or acquire in the first place. And therefore, um, what is the, what part of the primary space uh, should be explored? Um, that's hard to determine. So those are the challenges in tectonic models. And for the challenges of surface process models, these were some of our primary talking points. And one that came up in a few different ways was incorporating, how to, what are good practices for incorporating climate or weather variability and how can climate be implemented without relying on climate models that have uh, several non-essential components. Also, what are best practices for incorporating uncertainties in sediment transport materials and other process parameters? And how can we tackle or should we, should we tackle uh, implementing more complex uplift fields in, from, that we can get from tectonic models in order to model uh, topography? A challenge that remains is constraining uh, paleo elevation, which is, uh, has uh, important implications of um, relic landscapes. And um, string one is how is energy of water dissipated through domains of earth surface uh, systems, ecosystems, vegetation, vegetosphere, et cetera. Uh, similar to another group, we uh, discussed the um, challenges of equifinality and model, models and how to distinguish uh, different processes that led to similar model outcomes. And getting to the uh, technical side, we 
uh, discussed the importance to not only develop, but also to make paralyzed code that is uh, user-friendly and uh, doesn't fall into a black box. Uh, we discussed about applicability, the uh, carefully of, uh, applying uh, models. So for example, that all streams are not bedrock streams. So to, to consider where the stream power model is best suited. Uh, Someone similarly, three quarters of Earth is underwater. So perhaps we should learn how that works as well. And we also emphasize the importance of uh, depositional systems and asked ourselves, how can archives and depositional systems be used to inform models? Last question. Uh, what are the key questions or key challenges in coupling long-term and surface process models? And uh, some of the key ones were models driven by, should we continue to uh, construct our models and fine tune them to the scientific questions that we ask? And um, we also asked, do fully coupled models need to be, are they necessary in many applications? And uh, we, we um, envisioned a technique to uh, create modular, to, to follow a modular approach to couple tectonic and surface models than to only um, couple uh, complete uh, models. Thank you, everyone. Great effort.